Spending my whole life in Florida, I was always surrounded by the ocean. What captured my attention most were the fish, specifically sharks. And while getting my marine bio degree, that's where my interest stayed. But along the way, I had to learn a lot about other animals that weren't fish, including coral. And coral is, um, well, it's boring. They're boring. To a shark guy, they're boring. I know, I know they're important, but come on. They don't have a face or move around or have personality. They're not as tough or cool looking like sharks are. But some of my peers really loved coral. It was like they'd cracked some sort of secret code to loving them, and I just didn't get it. Then last summer, I saw a viral video by a wildlife influencer about the bleaching event with the coral in the Florida Keys. That video was really heartbreaking, but I noticed a huge flaw in it. They ended the video by saying all these corals were dead and nothing could be done, and that's not true. They weren't dead. They were bleached, which means they can still recover. But judging by the comments on that video, none of the millions of people who saw it knew that or knew there could be anything done to save them. As a conservationist, I have an issue with that, because if you tell people that nothing can be done, then nothing will be done. But there are people doing something about it right now. I wanted to meet some of them and learn from the people who dedicated their lives to protecting corals. And I couldn't think of a better place than where I started my own career in marine biology, SeaWorld Orlando, at their new Coral Rescue Center. So let's pay them a visit and find out how they've cracked the coral code. When you hear Coral Rescue Center, a lot of people might think that means SeaWorld is going out and rescuing corals from the wild to rehabilitate them. But that's not the case, and we're going to learn more about it today with the supervisor of SeaWorld's Rescue Center, Justin Zimmerman. Justin, thank you so much for having us. We're so excited to be here. As supervisor of SeaWorld's Corals, Justin and his entire team have a big full-time job to do. The lighting, the temperature, their food, even the salt water in these artificial habitats has to be exact. They actually make their own seawater on site to make absolutely sure it's the perfect mixture of minerals for the coral. As Justin's showing me around the Coral Rescue Center, I gotta say, it's really impressive. 10 of these habitats contain 18 different species of coral, some of which are incredibly rare in the wild, but why does SeaWorld have them then? So these corals that are here, these aren't your corals. These aren't SeaWorld's corals. These are Florida's corals? So the corals, the corals here that are under our care are, are owned by you and me. They're owned by the state of Florida. The corals were collected ahead of a disease line. The disease is called stony coral tissue loss disease. They're able to get these, these corals ahead of the disease line, give them to 18 zoos and aquariums, and they're providing care for them until they can put not the adult corals back, but the next generation, the offspring. So you're not just cloning them here. So there's a process that corals do where you essentially split them up and- It's called fragging. You take a fraction of the coral, mm. you let that piece grow, and then you can put that piece back under the reef. It's great, but what it does is it makes a lot of clones. So you're putting back the same coral over and over again in different, in different areas. Um, it's a great way to put back a lot of coral really fast. So here at SeaWorld, we're, we're spawning the corals. We're mixing their egg and sperm. We're actually breeding them breeding in the corals in a co yeah. controlled setting. To create new genetics, to create genetics that are haven't been on the reef yet. Maybe the, the, the next genotype will have the resistance to the disease, will be resistant to temperatures, resistant to pollution. We're, we're basically giving the coral, the baby corals, a head start. So we can put them back by the thousands instead of the one or two that may survive here and there. So the advantage to breeding coral instead of cloning it by fragging is to increase its genetic diversity. But breeding them is really hard. So hard that it was only in 2014 that anyone figured out how to breed corals in an aquarium. Justin, have there been any specific techniques that are unique to SeaWorld that you guys are using that are helping your corals? As a scientist from uh, the Horniman's Museum, his name is Jamie Craggs, what he did was he basically came up with the the theory that you can get these corals to spawn on cue by using light simulation. So what they're doing is they're creating an artificial sunrise, sunset, and moonlight cycle. So they can't tell that they're not in the wild. As far as they know, they're in a happy and healthy ocean. Correct. They think our corals think they're at Key West. Coral sunrise is Key West. Our coral sunset is Key West. The moonlight cycle is the same as Key West. That's kind of a groundbreaking revolution that we can create these baby corals. So we, yeah. can, we can have this coral spawning under our care. Cracking the coral code involves more than just breeding corals. It's getting people interested enough about them. And that can be hard. Corals, even though they're animals, aren't exactly the cutest or most relatable. They don't have a face or eyes. They're just weird little alien-like plant rocks. But they are important. What is it about coral yeah. that you connect to, Justin? I got my first aquarium when I was five years old. So I lived in Pennsylvania. I was landlocked. I was in the middle of the mountains. 
Um, I was fascinated by anything marine. Fish were amazing, but I really focused on just the, the chemistry, the, the crypticness. Um, in a coral reef aquarium, you see a lot of other invertebrates that live symbiotically with the corals. So it was kind of the it was a challenge. There's a lot of people that are interested in sharks, the large charismatic <laughs> megafauna, yeah. turtles, octopus. I kind of found a niche coral. It, it is a rainforest in the ocean. It's really the rain. They, they say it's the rainforest of the sea, and I have to agree. There's just so much diversity, and it's all created. It all starts with coral. There's about 110,000 square miles of coral reef on planet Earth. That's about the size of two Floridas, and 25 percent of all fish species live a portion of their life there. Imagine if one out of every four people you've ever met didn't exist because there wasn't a Florida for them to live at. That's how important corals are. So how can you not want to help them? Justin, what SeaWorld's doing here is really awesome with helping yep. to hold on to corals, but does that actually translate into saving wild corals? Yeah, Zach, it's, it's amazing that we can care for these corals in captivity, but the, the problem is, is that these corals eventually have to go back in the ocean. Mm -hmm. We can make millions of babies, thousands of babies. They can go back in the wild, but we need the environment to basically help to cooperate. So basically the environment needs to be cooler, it needs to be less pollution, and the disease that are out there right now, are, they're, they're still struggling with that. The biggest challenge with cracking the coral code is that there isn't just one code to crack. Yes, what Justin and his team at SeaWorld are doing is important, and it's a crucial piece of the puzzle but it's just one piece. If we don't fix the problems that got corals into the situation in the first place, then all of the work by so many dedicated people doesn't even matter. And there's no one answer to any of these problems. The easy way out is to decide that there is no answer, that the environment is a lost cause, and maybe you feel that way. Maybe you feel powerless to make a difference. And there are a lot of organizations that stand to make a lot of money from making you feel that way. The best ways to combat apathy are with actions that make a difference. Beach cleanups, using less plastic, reef safe sunscreen, even visiting the Coral Rescue Center at SeaWorld are all great options that are available to most. The best thing we can do is supporting local politicians that have eco-friendly agendas and actually checking them to make sure that they've been consistent with those policies. If they haven't, then it might be time to vote for someone else. There's some links in the description so you can check out your local legislators and how to contact them in your region. Oh, and maybe don't make videos telling people that the Florida reef is dying and nothing can be done to save it. Because the reality is, we're just getting started. So let's get cracking. I'm Zach Cole. And I'm Justin Zimmerman. This is the Coral Rescue Center at SeaWorld Orlando, and thanks for checking out what makes Florida so wild. I'm going to give a huge thank you to SeaWorld Orlando, Justin Zimmerman, and the rest of his team at the Coral Rescue Center. Also, big thanks to my friends Zach and Annalise and my partner Rhea for their help. If any of the coral info in here was a bit confusing to you, I've got another video for you right here that explains some coral terminology. I hope to see you there.